Hi guys, this is Kurt Schlichter. I am your West Coast Warlord. And I'm Jim Hansen, your East Coast Warlord. And we need to talk about an unpleasant topic today because there was an act of terrorism at a Christian church in Nashville. And unfortunately, we now have a new flavor of domestic terrorism from the trans extremists. And it's, it's horrifying, but we need to call it by what it is. Yeah, there's, there's people out there who've got a lot of uh, personal issues, and they've decided that the appropriate people to take them out on are Christians and children. And that's just damn well unacceptable. Now, this is an ugly situation. We all understand that. But there is something uh, uh, that we can look at in this horrible, horrible outrage. And it, it, it can give us a little hope. And that's the way that the Nashville police entered the school and ruthlessly hunted down and killed the piece of human garbage who was murdering kids. This was why we have sheepdogs. It's why we should have had school resource officers of some flavor armed and in that building already. But the Nashville police within 14 minutes had ended that threat. Unfortunately, after this terrorist had killed three nine-year-olds and three of the people who run the school. Now, we're gonna to have to discuss whether there is a trans extremist agenda that, that we need to deal with. There are people out there who suffer from gender dysphoria. And in the past, most of them just lived their lives and that was fine. But now there are some people, and I'm not even sure they're really suffering from gender dysphoria. I think a lot of them are perverts who just want an excuse to be able to hang out with girls in a, a women's locker rooms and restrooms. And, uh, you know, they get angry, they get bitter because we refuse to play along. And this one decide, uh, she, because it was a she, it's not a he. I find the idea that you should care about, quote unquote, misgendering a mass murderer to be bizarre and morally bankrupt. In any case, uh, this person decided that the uh, answer to her problems to murder other people, uh, the upside is the Nashville police thought the answer to the problem that was her was to punch a bunch of bullets into her. And uh, we need to strongly encourage that. And you need to take a lesson from that because uh, courage and heroism is not limited to people in uniform. Of course, Warlord Jim and I both served with a bunch of people who were legit heroes. A lot of first responders are legit heroes. But you know who else are heroes? Regular folks. And it's up to you to rise to the level of heroism that your heritage as an American demands. And, and we wanna also point out that the headmistress of the school was responding to the gunfire, even though she had no weapons, and she was one of the people who this terrorist killed. So uh, I, I wanna commend her and send you know, condolences, but respect to her family. And, and I think Kurt makes a, a great point that we can't accept the agenda that says women can become men and men can become women. It's time to go ahead and put that to rest. We can respect individual choices and go ahead and say, if you wanna be called Becky, I may call you Becky regardless of who you are, but we as a society cannot organize around the idea that people can actually change who they are. Yeah, the idea that we have some sort of moral responsibility to cater to people's delusions is, is bizarre to me, and it manifests, you know, there are adults out there who will argue that you should be able to castrate children to conform them to their delusions. Here's the appropriate way to treat someone who has gender dysphoria with, uh, with compassion and fairness. You don't go out of your way to hassle them, but they respond appropriately by not commanding you to somehow acknowledge what is demonstrably not so. It's called respect. I'm willing to give it, but I demand to get it. And that's what you have to do. Because there's way too many of us who are way too subservient. There are far too many sheep and not enough sheepdogs. And I think the other thing to look at is this was um, almost certainly in response to the recent laws that were passed in Tennessee outlawing child mutilation and child drugging based on gender dysphoria and, and requiring that no longer drag shows be allowed to have men in dresses 
thrusting their junk in the faces of children. That's unacceptable. Now, what's more unacceptable is that a group called for a trans day of vengeance on April 1st. They literally were saying, come to the Supreme Court and go ahead and wear a mask and be prepared to cause trouble. We don't know if that was one of the motivating factors, but the fact they felt comfortable, these trans extremists, to put out a flyer calling for a day of vengeance is disgraceful and they needed to be treated as the extremists they are. I, I was informed, Jim, that uh, our democracy uh, rejects insurrectionists and <laughs> somebody who wants vengeance over a matter that was put before the people elected by the citizens of Tennessee, you know, through their legislature, through the democratic process, and they decide that they want to respond with violence, that's unacceptable, meaning we will not accept it. And I, look, I got to tell you, I think it's a very, very bad idea for a small group of people to decide violence is the answer. Mm -hmm. the, the norm against violence is not to protect the majority. It's not to protect all the big people with guns. It's to protect the small groups of people that maybe the majority doesn't feel too great about. And if you throw out the norms, you're inviting problems. It, it, it's stupid. It's short-sighted. It's evil. Don't do it. I'm telling you. There's an answer there. Mutual respect. I demand it, but I'll give it when given to me. And I think what they're not taking into account is that we on the right are abiding by that. You know, if they want to throw these norms out, as you often say, uh, they're not going to like it when we play by their rules. And I think if they're going to go ahead and say that we will attack innocence in the pursuit of a political or ideological agenda and hurt them, that's the textbook definition of terrorism. And they need to be treated by that by law enforcement. And they need to know that the rest of us in society are no longer going to treat them with that compassion if they take that stance. I, I kind of wonder, Warlord Jim, if the whole idea behind it is not some sort of attention-seeking thing where you do the worst possible thing. I, I'm going to have, you know, they threaten to have sex with our kids. They threaten to mutilate our kids. They threaten to murder our kids. How do they not expect a reaction? I think part of it is the reaction. I think they want that reaction. And, you know, God help them if they get it. You know, and the other piece is the media immediately turned this deranged terrorist into a victim. All of a sudden, this is because the... the this person's family didn't treat them right, or they didn't like the, the religious upbringing they had, and all of that. And now they, the headlines tried to ignore the fact that this was a transgendered person who was conducting this. They immediately threw out their own rule, their thought policing rule against misgendering someone, and called her a female shooter in all the headlines so that they wouldn't have to deal with the fact that this was trans terrorism. And I think that's something we can expect from the left is, is hypocrisy and immediately turning the aggressor and the killer into a victim. It's disgraceful. Remember, everything with the regime media is a lie and a scam. But one thing that I, I was very happy to see was the Nashville police got the body cam footage out there right away. And of course, this being the warlords, uh, I think it's only appropriate that we... Uh, uh, examine and critique what we saw with those police officers reacting. And what, what I saw was people rolling up and immediately making preparations to act. I didn't see any hesitation. I didn't see uh, a lot of chaos. I saw someone take charge and, you know, on me, I need three, I need three. Come on, let's go, let's go. I need three. One more. One more. Let's go. Door kicking and hostage rescue was one of my specialties when I was on a special forces team. And everything I saw in that body cam footage made me proud to be a, an American who's had a responsibility for keeping other Americans safe. Those officers are everything good about men in this country. And I don't know if there were any females in those stacks, if there were good on them too. That's the kind of thing that we should expect, not what happened in Uvalde, 
where they said, oh my God, the bad guys got a scary gun. We should cringe for an hour plus while people are dying in that classroom. Nashville did us all proud. You know, Jim, uh, speaking as a man, and I would hope not a complete sissy, can you think of anything more horrible than living as one of the guys who didn't go in in Evalde? No, I, I can't. I, I, I would never... I, it's mortifying. No. And, and I think hopefully they have learned and everyone else in this country has learned that that's how you respond when children are in jeopardy. Words like courage and honor and duty are, are punchlines to a lot of people today. They're a joke. There's some that you know our elite laughs at. These guys weren't laughing. These guys exemplified it. And I got to say, if it came to the point where I realized I put my personal safety ahead of little kids, I don't think I could go on. I, no. I just, I, I swore I wouldn't do that. My, you know, my obligation, you know, to show up in uniform ended, but not my obligation to protect the American people with my life if necessary. You know, we get high fives and thank yous for your service. You know, at some point the bill comes due. And those guys, they paid their bill. I love to go on social media to find these uh, subjects. And boy, I, I found one with a uh, thread from a guy named Andrew Lynch. And he chronicles how uh, he met up a, a, a girl he'd been talking to, emphasis talking to, in a bar to give her a gift. Uh, and uh, she shows up, and she's late, and uh, there's a pretty bartender kind of watching it happen, and she proceeds to kind of chat with him a little, and then totally turn her back on and start chatting up another guy, and this dude just kind of wanders around. The bartender chick's like, what are you doing? Uh, he does nothing. He just sits there. girl eventually comes back to him, says, you're so great. Will you walk me to my car? Will you text me that you got home okay? And he ends up, you know, uh, uh, you know, living out how soon is now by the Smith. You go on your own <laughs> home and you, and you go home and you cry and you want to die. And, and I'm looking at this. I mean, Morrissey gets more action than this dude. I'm looking at this and I'm like, wrong, wrong, what time out? God, Jim, doesn't this guy sound like he needs some, uh, you know, vitamin D, if you know what I'm saying? And when did this happen? I, did, I know I, there's always been, you know, guys who were walkovers, pushovers, you know, and, and the kind of chicks who would go ahead and do that to them. But I think it's become the norm now. You know, I think in our lifetime, things have flipped. And okay, you can say that things were too far the other way when we were young, and I think that's fair. But at this point, the, the men have become so submissive that I, I don't understand what women can see in these cringing, capitulating, you know, soy drinking, latte sipping, artisanal arugula nibbling losers. It's painful to me because nobody took this guy aside and said, all right, let me introduce you to the concept of the friend zone. That's the place <laughs> you don't want to be. You like this chick. And yet you think you're somehow going to get a connection to her being the sassy gay friend who's not gay or particularly <laughs> sassy. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think at some level, you know, the gay dude is now the cool one. And unfortunately, that may work if you're, you know, the guy who wants to look all fabulous. But there's a very small number of women who are going to appeal to that, you know, that they're going to walk over you. There are, uh, as I always say, as a lawyer, there are an endless number of people who are happy to allow me to work for them for free. And that applies in relationships, too. There are an endless number of women out there, guys, who are happy for you to be their friend when they need you, to be that, that shoulder to cry on, to go have coffee with them, to come, you know, she claps her hands, you come, and you're like, Boy, if I'm only, you know, if I, if I only show I'm a complete invertebrate, she'll want to be my, my girlfriend. And, of course, at the same time, she's dating the dude with the Mustang, right, and the scar <laughs> and the parole officer. And, and you're feeling like an idiot because you're an idiot. And I, I guess there's a, there is a, a line to straddle there. You know, it doesn't mean you have to be the macho jerk. 
but you can't be the pathetic weakling in in the story. You can't because that just you're going to get yeah. nowhere with that. So I mean, well, show a little intestinal fortitude, show a little self-respect, and don't take a, a bunch of you know disrespectful crap from anyone, let alone anyone. a woman you're trying to to make a move on. No woman wants to date a wuss. <laughs> We should, there, there's, there's a warlordism. Have you ever gone out with a couple, right? And the guy, the woman's sitting there running down the guy in front of you. Yeah, it's disgraceful. And he's just taking it. I mean, I, I, Arena and I were out and we, we, we met up with this, uh, and, and, and she was running down her, it was kind of jokey, but it was also hugely, and Arena was like, holy crap, I'd never do that to you. And I was like, damn right you wouldn't course i'm with her because she's the kind of woman who would never do that but there are women who will do that and will treat you like garbage you can never be treated like garbage no woman is worth your dignity ever <laughs> and, and nothing good is going to come of it you know I, I, if you think no, somehow you even if you somehow manage to get her to become your woman she's not your woman she's riding no. your back like a parasite. She's a possum yes. on your back and you're the mama possum scurrying across the road. And as soon as she sees headlights, she's jumping off and moving on to the next ride. And it's gonna be a smoother ride than you. Let, you know, critiquing uh, Andrew's uh, little performance. He was focused entirely on this girl. He had the bartender there. There was another girl in the bar with some friends and he's got one itis. That is, there is one girl and one girl only, and that's the one over there talking to some other dude. Dude, there are more women than men. And here's your competition, guys. Your competition are dudes who get drunk and high all the time. They're at home playing video games. They're at home playing Touch Monkey with pornography. You know, that's your competition. If you show up, right, and you're not a complete mutant, and you're outside in the sunlight, and you're not a drooling idiot, you have placed yourself ahead of 80%, you are in the top 20% just for showing up and not being a loser. Dude, you're a king, <laughs> act like a king. Or at least act like you know some minor royal, you know what I mean? Be, own, own a piece of <laughs> a province somewhere. Yeah, baronet, anything is Lord, better. You know, some kind of cow. <laughs> Do not be a serf or a peasant, and, and that's up to you. And, and it, it boils down to having the self-respect for yourself first, okay? Yes. There, is, there is no reason any woman who is talking to another man any time you are with her is not worth the time of day. So see that yeah. early. That's not just a red flag. That's a turn and run flag. And, and well, leave her stranded. Move on. Dude, the power of ghosting. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I've had a nice time. <laughs> Goodbye. I should be like, what the hell are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And then you leave. You don't let her talk. And, oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. You have shown your character. As I once said to a young lady, you're someone else's problem now. <laughs> And, and and she is. Dude, there are quality women out there. The warlords have demonstrated this. You deserve better, but only if you deserve it. And you've got to, and to deserve it, you've got to show you deserve it by not acting like a human dish rat. <laughs> and that also starts there. That's there are, are preparatory steps before that because you can't just fake self respect. You got to have self respect because you have made yourself an attractive person. I'm not a pretty man by any stretch of the imagination. At best, maybe I get to ruggedly handsome on a good day. But, I, but I have I like appealing characteristics because I work hard, I succeed, I treat women well, and I don't take crap from anybody. If you get yourself to that, you are in a position where you will get respect from the kind of woman you want. Raise yourself up first. Well, I, I can testify that you don't create crap. And at some point, we'll talk about uh, uh, the, the necessary uh, physical conflict. Because you and I have had uh, situations where we've had to rise to the defense of friends. Didn't, threat, didn't, didn't devolve into a, uh, a gnarly brawl, but it could have. And uh, we didn't back down because we don't back down. 
And that's what, and that's where you get the confidence from. You have to have confidence. And e even if you fake confidence, if you fake it long enough, you'll realize there's something real inside of you that 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 you can use as a tool to to go out there mm -hmm. and present yourself not as some sissy beta, but as an alpha. And we're not talking like the that that you know the guy on the internet with the 15 cars <laughs> and the only fans girls and the uh, probation officer. We're talking guys who say, "Hey, here's what I'm going to do. Are you along for the ride, or are you going to catch a bus? Are you going to paddle the boat with me? You know, I want. I, I have a partner for a wife. My wife's a badass yeah. in her own right, and I think she's damn well. You know, is. And, you know, that's part of the game: is pick someone who is not going to be a trophy or an adornment in some way to your life. Who's going to well, make look, it they better? Be a trophy and that's adornment. fine, right. and they should. Be. <laughs> but they also but they, contribute. They have their quality on there their own. There you go. Well, hey, um, let's talk about someone who has made himself the kind of guy who gets the girl in the end. And that would be in our next upcoming segment about Die Hard, the movie. There is an eternal game we play about whether Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And I think Kurt would tell you instantly that that's not important because obviously it is. What Die Hard is, is a killing terrorists movie. And that's what makes it one of the great American movies. And it all starts with the star, who is Bruce Willis. If you look at Bruce Willis now, we all know he's suffering, uh, uh, you know, this debilitating uh, a dementia problem. But if you see what's happening, he's got his beautiful wife and he's got Demi Moore taking care of him, his ex-wife. I mean, this guy is an alpha, even even in decline, and and that comes through in the movie. He's uh, he's an imperfect guy in the movie. He's got some flaws. He's not a Superman, but he's brave and he's smart and relentless, he's confident, relentless, yeah. and he just will not stop in the defense of civilians, including his his. Uh, uh, semi-estranged wife. And the best part is, okay, first of all, we've got, we've got classic, I mean, this is an 80s movie, so everything about it is oh, over yeah. the top. But we've got the German oh, terrorists, yeah. you know, we've got a, a giant building being basically taken over as part of this plot. But the one thing it does that just makes it enjoyable is every character gets to live it to the fullest. They don't pull punches on yes. it. There's no one feeling bad about this. There's no one who's concerned about, oh, am I gonna hurt somebody's feelings? Every single character in that movie is pumped up. And it's so much more fun to watch characters with that kind of flavor than the dull, lifeless, again, arugula nibbling clods we have in, in movies today. Yeah, there's no wokeness in Die Hard. There's anti-wokeness. And it's funny because they're they're talking about people. At one point, there's a character, and uh, Hans Gruber is uh, reciting his biography, mentions that he was in a Japanese internment camp. He's also the head of the, the, the company. Right. So he, it, it's, it's not a, here's my victim card. It's, here's a part of a challenge I overcame card. And it's all about overcoming challenges. Uh, and, 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 of course, uh, awesome weaponry, of course, the uh, Beretta 92F, the uh, uh, M9 pistol, which, of course, we both carried in the military. Oh, yeah. uh, and I may or may not own one. Uh, just beautiful. Uh, MP5s, the HK uh, submachine gun, and the, uh, what is it, the Aug Steyr uh, 5.56, the yeah. uh, Bullpup uh, Austrian rifle. It's a gun lover's dream. And there's no, and let me tell you, this is a Second Amendment movie, Jim. <laughs> and it was, and the best part is they, they put them to good use and, and they were almost like flavoring to the movie. You know what I mean? They, they, they yes. added spice to scenes that, that would have been less fun otherwise. And that was one thing about movies in the 80s is you got plenty of shootouts in modern films, but in, in the 80s yeah. it was more of a, the stylized version of these things, you know, before we got to the Matrix with everybody, oh boy, I can fly yeah. and I can do this. And everything Bruce Willis did was not perfect. He was not succeeding every time. No. He was getting his butt kicked, but he kept finding a way. He did that all American thing. He overcame every obstacle they put in his way. 
And that's why he was the hero. Exactly. Uh, Hans Gruber at one point calls him, uh, uh, you know, John Wayne. He says, no, I'm more Roy <laughs> Rogers. He's the cow. He, he grabbed that American heritage. The, the, you know, you look at the guys in Nashville and while they were, you know, using their tactics and techniques to move forward, it was the same spirit. There's other people in danger. I'm going to put myself in the line of fire and I'm going to do what I have to do to neutralize that enemy. And, that, you know, the message of Die Hard is that one American can make a difference. It's very important. The bad guys are all foreigners. <laughs> and here's another thing. This is about one Americans. thing that This is about us. One part. thing you're going to see in the movies that we enjoy is the fact that there is someone who's not going to let stupid rules get in the way of getting the mission accomplished. And you see that with uh, Bruce Willis's character. You see that with the, the no. donut-munching cop who decides, you know what? Everybody who is uh, slowing this down and stopping the good things from happening and stopping the hostages from getting rescued can pound sand. I'm going to help the one guy who's doing the right thing. And the two of them saved everyone's lives. That's how it works. If the rules work, you can follow them. If they don't, you're no longer obligated when it's life or death. And at the end of the day, uh, it is the donut munching cop who rises to the occasion. You're told this is a fat slob. <laughs> he's, you know, he's a donut munching loser. He's just some geek. He's some uh, mm -hmm. uh, nobody. But at the end of the day, he's the guy who makes it happen. And in the end, does Bruce get the girl? Of course he gets the, girl, gets the girl because she is reminded that for all of his flaws, which were many, and which he ended up copping to, he was the kind of man that she could respect. And she was she was pretty yeah. badass herself. You know, she held her own in the movie. You know, then and you had the one yeah. sniveling cokehead, you know, who was willing to sell out everybody who was the classic dude bro. Who, oh yeah, I'm smooth, Joe, I got a nice car, I got all these things. But in the end, when the, when the nuts came down, the nuts came down? <laughs> when the chips were down, it ended poorly when poorly. the chips were down, that guy failed. And the man who came through yeah. had the all-American qualities that we know and love and that we, the warlords, are bringing back. Absolutely. Well, guys, that's our edition of The Warlords. We'll be back soon. Uh, we will give you more life experience, more encouragement, more illumination, and, of course, more cultural fun. I'm Kurt Schlichter, West Coast Warlord. Jim Hansen, the East Coast Warlord. <laughs>